Welcome back to Freeman. As you can see, we are currently in a battle with some bandits. Amusingly enough, I have tried to give my forces some night vision goggles, and it seems to maybe make a little bit of a difference when they are fighting at night time. As you can see, there's an enemy right there. We can take him out, no problem at all. Now, you may notice that I actually have a scope. Now, here's the thing. I have a scope mainly because I'm using an SVD rifle right now, and that is something that I was able to afford literally just because I got super lucky when raiding a bandit camp. And I was able to get some of this. I was able to get some heavy tactical vests. I think I got like three of them. I sold one of them for 40, uh, I think, is it 14,000 that you can sell them for or 10,000 or something like that? Anyway, the point is, is that I sold it for a very decent amount of cash and then I was able to buy an SVD rifle just straight up and I thought to myself it comes with a scope so why would I have to put it on the SKKS which is what I bought at the very beginning and I just wanted to keep it in my inventory just so that I could show you this is the weapon I ended up using all the way up until being able to afford this SVD rifle so th those of you that you know may select the same choices that I selected at the very beginning you're gonna end up with 45 rifle proficiency and if you don't want to deal with really really low accuracy and uh, well not so good damage by using an assault rifle or using some other weapon in the meantime then you can buy the SKKS for about 6,000 and it will it will do very well it will actually do very well and I was able to kill most bandits in about two hits and admittedly it does not have a scope so it is a bit difficult to use with its iron sight but the iron sight is much better than, a than, a than the AKM iron sight so it really is something that you probably want to consider going for if you decide to do the same build that I went for. Anyway, I've also been able to take a couple of prisoners here and also I have found out, I have found out something rather amazing. Alright, so here's the thing. Uh, let me see. Uh, quests. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so this is the reason why I actually destroyed a looter camp, because I wanted to recruit Yevgen. And amazingly enough, he is available. He is available. Like, you can just get him just by completing a quest. I think that's a really cool way of doing things, by the way. And uh, much better than them just having, like, a monetary recruitment cost. I think it makes it so much more dynamic and a little bit more enjoyable as well because you can you can go and get some loot from the looted camp you can get some experience and you can just have a grand old time and i have completed this quest so there you go quest completed reputation plus five and now <laughs> now we have a companion by the way this is this is igor i would love to be able to get him to join us but unfortunately he requires a little bit harder of a quest, as you can see right here. You need to own one city, declare independence, and then come back for Igor. So that's going to take quite a while. I don't know whether I'll be able to do it in time because there's 321 hours. It is a very long time indeed, but hopefully I'll be able to accomplish it in the time given. Otherwise, these are my stats right now. I'm level 4. This is my SVD right here. You can put a rifle silencer on it as well, which is really cool. I'm using one of the heavy tactical vests. I uh, bought this pilot helmet as well as an AM mask, and I found the military shirt Navy. And uh, amazingly enough, I apparently spawned in with Navy military pants. So I'm not entirely sure whether that is a random thing or whatever. And then I also spent a little bit of the extra cash on night vision goggles. And I think I have a couple of people with night vision goggles as well. Oh yeah, by the way, these are the names. <laughs> uh, these are the names that we have in our squad at the moment. We have. It's kind of like a sick doggo squad, isn't it? It's kind. It's kind of. It's kind of sad, really. But I kind of felt, hey, you know what? We got one of them, so why don't we just add a whole bunch of others to. Sort of give, uh, you know, give uh, some remembrance, give some uh, memorial to them, and now some of them are already past some of them have already died but there are those that are still alive and we have well a mixture of both so we have baby girl here we have cha cha and we also have shiloh so yeah <laughs> seems like a lot of people do have some sick dogs and i gotta say i'm really sorry i i am really really sorry to hear that i just want to you know try and give back to those to those poor poor little doggos 
So yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm doing here. A little bit. I mean, it's it's really not gonna do that much. Let's face it. But it is a nice gesture. At least I think so. So anyway, we can uh, level these fellows up as well. Very nice. Okay, so these guys I have literally just recruited, as you can see right here. And I want to kind of have some separate squads. So just in case we need to, you know, perform some flanking actions and stuff like that. I kind of thought, hey, you know what, it just gives me an excuse to uh, get all these guys in with each other and it kind of it kind of works out quite well. So we're just going to give this guy my SKKS because he actually has 38 in rifle proficiency. I don't have anything else for him, unfortunately. do have a med kit for him as well. Now these, all of these have med kits. And the Cha Cha Squad all have medkits. Baby Girl Squad has grenades, and two of them have night vision goggles. And then the Malamute Squad is going to be. Yeah, they all have night vision goggles as well. So I was able to get that. Yeah, amazingly enough, night vision goggles are pretty hard to find. They are pretty hard to find. So it seems like maybe I'm just not looking in the right place, or I'm just getting a bit unlucky. Anyway, we're going to go and sell some prisoners. We're just going to sell the cheapest ones because I don't really want to be lugging around a huge bunch of, of units and they're not going to be that effective or useful for ransoms anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to head onward. We are going to head onward and I am going to... Should I, should I kill the looter camp? I can do it. I have done it before, but it was pretty harsh. Maybe I want to be a bit careful. I mean... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't I have enough money for like a tactical a tactical Kevlar helmet or something like that? Because I would very much like to have a better helmet. Uh, yeah, no, I don't really want to buy the Marauder helmet, even though it is really good. The tactical Kevlar helmet is just better in every single way. So yeah, I did as I said I would in the previous episode, and I completely restarted. All right, so I've decided to, instead of going over to a different section, we're just going to stay right next to the CFR because I'm thinking to myself, maybe it would be a good idea for us to attack the CFR at some point and make our first town there. Because I know that last time in the previous series, I actually decided, hey, you know what, let's, uh, let's be friends with them. And yeah, okay, you know, that kind of works. But let's face it, why would we want to be friends with that faction when we could be friends with, I don't know, the FCA or something along those lines. Somewhere that is going to be much more of a threat to us in the future. And I seem to recall that if you do make your own faction and then you start making alliances with people using diplomacy and things like that, then you are actually able and indeed capable of completing the game or shall we say completing the quest that they give you at the very start of the game. In other words, unifying the entirety of Chernivka. So in other words, if you have alliances, then you are basically making everyone peaceful with you and peaceful as a result in the entirety of the place because no one is at war with each other, which is actually pretty cool. So maybe that is an idea. Maybe we'll try to do something about, uh, you know, do something like that. But uh, I don't know right now. So anyway, let's get uh, Night Vision Goggles up and running. We are up against... Uh, who are we actually up against? Oh yes, the Uman Brotherhood right now. We are, yes, we're actually fighting a couple of their terrorists. And we'll see how that goes. I don't see any of them right now, but that doesn't mean anything really. Now, you may see that uh, some of our squads have slightly diminished numbers, and that is because I actually ran into a much more powerful party by mistake. And, uh, well, let's just say that we ended up losing a couple of our forces because they literally just outnumbered us massively. It's about 50 of them against, like, what, 10 of us. So that really did not go too well. And you can't really... I mean, unless you die, unless your character dies, then you can't really retreat that easily, as far as I'm aware, from a battle. So I did end up losing that. But we only lost about 2,000 credits and a, a, a piece of beef. Apparently, they apparently they were hungry or something, and uh, otherwise it wasn't really that bad. And we did lose two, two units, but those units were not very well equipped anyway, so it wasn't really a big deal. I am literally just going to be waiting here. I think we will just wait here, and we will see what the enemy has in store for us. But, I mean, if I zoom in here, you can see that there's actually no enemies around at all. There, are, there are, There's no one. So, up, oh, hello there. So 
And there we go. We took one out. Very nice indeed. Okay, so maybe I can kill a couple more. I would like it. And that was indeed a headshot as well. Very nice indeed. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to slightly change our formation. Let's clear that. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. All right, so that's a little bit easier. And where are those enemies? There they are. There's another headshot. Very nice. And we are now level 7. Yes. Nice. Okay, so if we can maybe... Nice. Okay. Nice. That's good. Okay, continue doing damage, please. Continue doing damage. That is exactly what we need. Okay. Oh, did, what? <laughs> did you see that? Uman terrorist killed by Uman terrorist? I think that there was a grenade there and they I think they killed each other. That is kind of crazy, okay. And I'm dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, that happens. That happens more often than you know. Oh yes, it does. Anyway, that's not really a big deal. I personally don't really mind too much about that because we took out quite a few of them. Well, what? Four of them or something? Five of them, I think? So now we're on an even keel here, and we should be a little bit easier for us to achieve victory. And again, I think the main reason that the AI does not shoot during the night sometimes is that they literally just don't have the vision. That's it. They just can't see. They just can't see the enemy. So I'm hopeful that that is all that it is, and it's not, not some kind of bug or anything. But they seem to attack absolutely perfectly in daytime, so I would assume that it is a nighttime issue. But I think that that's kind of harsh. I think that might be kind of harsh, because if they literally cannot attack up until the enemy is almost right on top of them during a nighttime battle, and you have just started the game, and of course at that point you're not going to have night vision goggles, then it's going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to be pretty difficult, you know. It's going to be pretty difficult. So, not entirely sure how we're going to work that. But uh, well, we'll we'll try it because I mean, as I say, we do have two squads at the moment with with night vision goggles, but otherwise, no, no one else does. So that's that's kind of mm, it's kind of difficult. But anyway, let's go and uh, see if we can support our forces. Uh, they are up against much tougher enemies than they currently are because, I mean, my guys are basically like level 3. And I think these enemies are probably going to be much higher level than that. Because the Uman Brotherhood is certainly known for being extremely good with, with experienced units. They have like very, very good high level units, but their equipment is not so good. So it is kind of a balance in that respect. I'm not seeing anything right now. They're probably going to try and do the same thing that they did last time and come around from the side, which would be kind of bad. I'm kind of surprised that I died so incredibly quickly before, really, because I am wearing some pretty decent armor. I'm not wearing terrible armor at all. I'm wearing, you know, tactical Kevlar armor is pretty nice. My helmet is, on the other hand, not so good. So that might also be a bit of a reason why I died almost instantly. But hopeful that that will not happen again. Yeah, I can't see anything from over there. So that must mean that they are coming from a different direction. There they are. You see them? Did you see them? Yeah, there was one right there. Let me see if I can get into prone position or something. Seems like we are. Yep, there we go. There they are. Okay, there's one of their militants down. I think that's the other one over there as well. I'm just going to just very slowly... Okay, yeah, I'm going to run away now. I am being shot from the side. That is a big problem. Okay, so we're going to put these two squads around here. Going to move this forward and that around there. What, what? We lost another one? Are you serious? We actually lost another, another unit? I, did I even see that? No, I didn't. I must have been concentrating too much on shooting. Yeah, I've got to help out here. I've really got to help out here, but I'm being targeted down pretty harshly by the enemy. 
So as soon as I pop my head up, it's basically good night. So we're going to retreat one of our squads right there. And we're going to get these guys over here. And retreat this squad as well. Okay, there's only five enemies remaining. We should have a relatively decent time if I can just shoot them. And actually kill them, then that's a really, really good thing to do. <laughs> uh, and I'm being shot again from somewhere. I don't know where, though. I really don't know where, so I'm just going to have to heal myself and just hope that I don't get shot again. Seems like my Federal Infantry are helping a little bit now. But yeah, I mean, look, we've, we've suffered casualties from every single squad at the moment. I feel, I, you know, I feel like the AI is still not really working as intended, even though I did say earlier in the episode that it seemed to be fixed. But you can see right here that this, this enemy right here, it's just, look at him. He's just standing there. He's just standing there not doing anything. But we did get a massive payday for this 2.5k experience and 34,000 credits, which is fantastic. I mean, look at this armor as well. We're gaining some wonderful, wonderful rewards for this. But that was, I don't know. I feel like the AI does not really work too well in the nighttime. And I'm talking even about people with night vision goggles. These guys all have night vision goggles. You can plainly see that right here. So they should theoretically be able to see as well as anyone in that kind of environment. But they weren't. They weren't. They were literally taking so much damage. It was just crazy. And the only person alive from Shiloh's squad is this guy. And he's a companion. And he's a companion. That's terrible, isn't it? So we're going to have to do something about this. I'm going to just auto-equip him real quick. Auto-equip this. Auto-equip this. Because they're going to put on the best stuff. And we might as well auto-equip these guys as well. Even though they don't seem to want to put anything on. So I suppose that's fine. But yeah. Uman terrorists, everyone. They're pretty difficult. They are pretty difficult. So we're going to see if I can maybe just go over to... I'm going to go over to Mern, actually. And then we'll maybe try and take out a looter camp. Because I think that's probably along the right side of our kind of skill level at the moment. We probably also want to go over here. I have 92,000. Uh, I'm actually unsure whether I should just recruit armed bodyguards just straight up here. Or whether I should recruit some militia riflemen as well. Because apparently, according to some people... Militia riflemen are actually really good. So maybe it would be an idea to go with some of them. Just to flesh out our uh, our squads, basically. So yeah, why not? Let's let's do let's do a little bit of that. So let's get some let's get some of them. Not all not all of them. And let's get two of these. Oops, I did by mistake recruit someone that I didn't mean to, but that's alright. Not a big deal. Alright, so what we're gonna do is uh oh these guys don't have anything oh they do they do have things oh yes that's fantastic okay so yeah we're just gonna give five here and we'll just put another three in there and then we're going to well i'm actually going to dismiss this one because uh do they come with smgs i don't have an smg so i'm just going to dismiss the female militia for the moment and that is going to be our our kind of squad at the moment and we're going to see how that goes now i wish i had some kind of doggo picture here i wish i had like a doggo picture i think you can actually do that and you can see here this is kind of like the thing that they displayed in the modding introduction that you can actually change them to be and i think i'm actually going to do that because that just looks cute so we're just going to do that for all of them there we go <laughs> uh that looks cute okay so that's pretty cool. Otherwise, uh, they, do I really want to give them all med kits? I guess I will give them all med kits just to make sure that they survive as much as, as much as they possibly can, I suppose. And there we go. These guys also need med kits. Wow, yeah, I'm going to need to go in and buy some more med kits. That's for sure. All right, so I'm going to go and fight a looter camp after this and see how we go. All right, so here we go. This is our well, second ever raid on a looter camp, and uh, you haven't seen the previous ones, so this is going to be interesting because I did the previous one at night, and I decided, hey, you know what, I'm just going to kill everyone myself, and I did that with my SKKS, amazingly enough, 
and uh, they were pretty easy. They they were really really easy. They did not fire back at me or anything, not that much at least. But it was pretty pretty close in the end. So I suppose yeah maybe it is going to be kind of difficult. But now that we have more units, that is hopefully going to make us have a bit of a better time. So we'll see how it goes. But as it stands right now, there's only 25 enemies when we have 15. So we should be okay. And uh, we're going to be a bit sneaky here. I'm going to try and hide behind this rock, which is exactly what I always do. Rocks are your best friend most of the time. And they are very good movie stars as well. So there's also that. Ah, there they are. What? They're wearing some very good stuff, aren't they? Oh, well, headshot time, I think. Oh, I can kill these in one hit, actually. Oh, that's actually kind of hilarious. Okay, well, I, yeah, as I say, I haven't actually fought these fellows with the SVD rifle yet. So being able to kill them in one hit is a blessing. Absolutely. Let's move these over here, try and cover their flanks a little bit as well, and... I really wish I had a grenade right now, but mm, I'm not particularly good at throwing them, so it's probably not the best idea. Let's just hide behind our units a little bit. Try and do massive damage. We've leveled up to eight. Yes. Fantastic. Isn't that a guy over there? Hmm. Maybe not. There is a guy over there, though. Is that an enemy? Nah, I think that's a rock or something. Well, so far, so good. And this is exactly what I mean. If we are uh, going to be up against the Uman terrorists, for example, that's just, ah, you know, that's just too, too close for my liking. Just way, way, way too close because they are just really, really good. Oh, okay. Apparently, whoa, apparently they're fighting back. They are fighting back like no one's business. So they did take out one of our militia riflemen, but that's really not a big deal. Because as, as you saw, I recruited them for like 5,000, which is a lot. Yes, okay, you know, it's a lot. But thankfully, we have the numbers in this particular fight. And I think that's really what is helping us quite a bit here. So I'm just going to get down while I reload. I wanted to shoot that guy behind the sandbags, but it seems like he's hiding. that guy not good enough not good enough accuracy oh well <laughs> never mind let's do this oh we should probably actually tell Shiloh to retreat <laughs> not a good idea to send that in thank you and there you go last one down Fantastic. All right, so there's 5,450 experience. Not as good, of course, as fighting Uman terrorists, but I'll take it because literally it is just much better to have a safe battle that is going to give you a surefire, a little bit of cash every now and again, and you can also get some experience for your units. And as you can see, once again, Shiloh Squad only has Yevgen available for battle. Don't know what's going on with him, but apparently, is he cursed? Is Yevgen cursed? Because maybe that's maybe that's what's happening here. Because usually I don't lose that many people. But yeah, I'm, I guess I'm going to have to go and recruit some better ones from somewhere else. Maybe the mercenary camp or something. I have 19,000. Maybe I'll just get him someone really good <laughs> if I can. Uh, what about a FCA rifleman? Apparently people say the FCA rifleman's really good. So maybe I should recruit one of those. Let's recruit one of those. There you go. Oh, he comes with an SKKS. Ooh, that's pretty nice. All right, so yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be pretty good there. 
And otherwise, people are doing pretty nicely, as you can see. It seems like people take a lot longer to level up in this version. Is that just me? I think that might, I think that might be the case, because you can see here, these guys are level 4, right? And these guys are level 1. And after one battle, usually people would have leveled up to level 2. So it is a bit weird. But anyway, I'm just going to continue leveling marksmanship at the moment because what I'm doing is I am leveling up machine guns because we're going to be using something a little bit different in this series as we can already see from me using the SVD rifle. And I think personally, I'd probably be able to take this. I would probably be able to take Zinkov almost immediately right here. And I think that might be something that I will be interested in very, very soon. So let's just... Uh, uh, I'm just going to sell everything that I can, really. I'm just going to sell everything I can, and then I'm just going to buy the things that I really want. So I want a tactical Kevlar helmet, but I, I can't seem to be able to find one for some reason. Is there anyone here that I can recruit? Ah, Leonid. Hello there. Okay, so I'm just going to speak to him a little bit. Can you join me? Okay, what do you uh, what do you want me to do? Ah, okay, he wants me to do the same thing. Own one city, declare independence, and then come back for Leonid. Okay, so yeah. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that right now, but we have a pretty significant amount of time, so hopefully we'll be able to do it in the end. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.